I think this is an, an, an item that is a multi-year, six, eight-year project. And uh, hopefully I'll be back on the council when, the, when it comes back again. Uh, let me, uh, he has a, a little PowerPoint presentation. Why don't I let him do that? And then I'll make some uh, final comments and open up to question. What's well, easiest to try to do from here? Perfect. Okay, so this, this presentation uh, is, is in the packets, and I also wanted to bring it here so that it, members of the audience can kind of understand what we're talking about. Um, first of all, uh, we're talking about the CRS district in downtown, uh, which is a majority of the core of the downtown. Uh, in 1952, we became a city, and we uh, had emergency zoning, called it the CR2 RS. In 1969, we got around to reviewing uh, zoning, and it became the CRS district for the, uh, the first time. Um, 1988 uh, was the first time that banks and other non-retail uses on the street level are no longer permitted uses within the CRS zone. So existing banks became legal non-conforming uses. Um, new banks were no longer permitted. Whenever a uh, zoning change like this is made, I think the expectation is that there will be some rate of attrition going forward that these uh, properties will no longer at some point in the future, we'll no longer have a bank operating out of them. What we've seen is in the last 24 years or so, uh, we have not seen any attrition in banks in the CRS zone. So the CRS zone as it stands today, and this is out of our municipal code, uh, the following uses shall be permitted in the CRS zone. Offices, and I've highlighted here uh, section B, offices located above the ground floor and section D, personal services, except when located in the ground floor building space that fronts directly on First Street, uh, Main Street, or State Street. So in the CRS zone, if your building frontage opens directly onto Main Street, for example, uh, personal services are not permitted. So uh, personal services could be interpreted as a, uh, banking services. Similarly, the offices located in banks are part of uh, what is uh, not permitted on the ground floor on Main Street in the CRS zone. So what is the CRS zone? The CRS zone, uh, this is pulled off of our, uh, again, off the city website, our, our, our zoning, and I've got a little animation here that highlights it. It's just the light pink area in here is the CRS zone. So that's the core of the downtown, State Street, Main Street, uh, from First Street to the intersection of State and Main. And, and the vision statement for the CRS zone, which is in our uh, municipal code, is that the city shall retain and enhance the downtown Los Altos village atmosphere and shall seek to attract businesses to the village. So second and Main Street, we have a couple of pictures here. And I took these before uh, one of my office hours and was walking around downtown. So this is second and Main Street is one example of an intersection in the downtown. There's desirable retail space. We have some of our national tenants actually operate out of 2nd and Main Street. There is a bank on the corner at 2nd and Main. And what uh, Council Member Packard and I have noted is that this bank is actually conforming in a 25-foot width on Main Street. This is different in both vibrancy and uh, the design of the banks that are just down the street. A block away, we have 3rd and Main. We have two particular banks that have large windowless buildings, and they uh, create an area that could be seen as dead space. Something that's somewhat understood in, in retail is that shoppers and pedestrians, uh, even if they have a specific destination that they're going to, they're willing to walk about a quarter of a mile uh, past shop windows to see what, what else they might have forgotten. So these banks create a natural stopping point for some of our shoppers in the downtown uh, where if they are going to Starbucks or if they're going to something in the, the, the peak activity area, which is right there, again, highlighted in green at, at 2nd and Main, uh, they're willing to walk a quarter of a mile. But as soon as they get to 3rd and Main, which is the black dot represented there, they're less likely potentially to continue on the, the loop around our downtown area. So the banks are creating a natural stopping point um, and potentially reducing the vitality or the uh, pedestrian traffic that makes it all the way down the curve and the dogleg on Main Street. So 
we have been looking at options. What, what options do we have if attrition isn't going to settle uh, the, the issue with the zoning? What else do we uh, have in our toolbox? And one of the things that I became aware of when we were talking about digital signs and the sign ordinance was the idea of amortization. And so uh, amortization assesses the financial impact to the tenant if they're required to close and then uh, determines an appropriate time frame for the amortization to reduce the financial impact. So this takes a, a look at what, what kind of impact would this have to these national bank tenants and then uh, in, in the scale of years, looks at how many years we would provide them with the ability to operate continuing in the non-conforming uh, before they are no longer permitted to operate as a bank. So that's, that's our slideshow there. Okay. Now let me cover just a couple other things. We're really talking about two different types of things. Uh, the, the large banks, Citibank, uh, um, Chase and uh, Bank, of the, Bank of the West are their non-conforming uses, but they're also non-conforming buildings, because the buildings are supposed to have every 25 feet a separate entrance. So they're both non-conforming uses and non-conforming buildings. U.S. Bank, which is a, you saw the picture of the small one that's at Second and and uh, and Main, that's a non-conforming use, but it's a conforming building. It could be easily converted to other retail. And um, now, the, the concept of, um, and, and we're not talking just about banks. Uh, other non-conforming buildings, if you look at the, the, uh, the um, uh, Masonic Hall, that is a, an extremely non-conforming building. It's also a non-conforming use. Likewise, the, um, the Costume Bank building is both a non-conforming use and a non-conforming building. Uh, and of course, we have a whole slew of, uh, of, um, of uh, nail salons. Now, uh, and, and one, one law firm that's on Main Street. The, now, my first experience, I want to just take a moment, uh, about 25 years ago, uh, there's a large, a very large property owner in Silicon Valley. And they approached me as an attorney because among their vast holdings was a little building in South Palo Alto where Fry's is currently located. They owned that building. And the city of Palo Alto was in the process of wanting to uh, encourage housing. So they were in the process of applying an amortization schedule for that building to require, I think it was in eight years, maybe in six, that it could no longer be used for retail. It had to be used for housing. And uh, so I was employed by the owner to see how to fight it. And it turned out it's very difficult to fight. And so that was my first exposure. Now it turned out the city passed it. And then as the years went by, they, they uh, got fries in as a tenant. And the people of Palo Alto love fries, and the city loves fries because they get so much sales tax that the city had the wisdom to reconsider their moratorium uh, or their amortization uh, uh, schedule, and now it's, it's retail permanently. So that's my first exposure to this. Um, I don't have, and I don't think Jarrett does, an answer of should we should we actually pull the trigger on any of these? Should it apply to banks? Uh, aren't some little banks uh, retail banking isn't what it used to be? Aren't some banks downtown helpful even if they're on Main Street? Maybe they are. Um, uh, do we want to really do something with the Masonic Hall or the um, or, or, or some of these nail salons? I, I don't know. I don't have an answer. But I I, I do know. But nothing will happen unless we do a study and look at it. This is the next step of an evolution of our downtown. We unfortunately have a limited space for retail. It's very limited. And how do we maximize that? And, and as a practical matter, Jared is right. Once you get down to Main and Third, it's dead. Um, you don't see a lot of people walking past there because it's the, the retail experience is non-contiguous. So our proposal is we form this committee, uh, 
and we report back to the council uh, what we find and what we consider is, is options. Uh, whatever we find, I know it's not the, the trigger is not going to be pulled for years. And some future council may say fooey on the whole thing or may say, thank goodness they had the foresight to do this. I'm open to any questions. Yeah. Mr. Cassidy? Well, I just have two. Uh, one, um, did you both work together on this report? Yes. Okay. Um, he corrected and, my typos. Okay. <laughs> 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 and then uh, uh, secondarily, um, you, you, you show one of the non-conforming buildings as well as uses being um, uh, the uh, Bank of the West and the immediate, immediate property next to it um, is still uh, vacant. Uh, par cars are parked on it. Um, I know the landowner, when we chose to not allow them to continue their drive-in uh, window or drive-up window, uh, was not interested in having anything else put on that property. Uh, what do you envision uh, utilizing in terms of your report specifically for a void? I, I think, Dave, that uh, what, what I hope is that we, we have the opportunity to actually speak to some of the, the, the property owners and, and, the, and the businesses. Now, in that instance, my understanding is the bank is willing to pay the rent on that and carry it as a, just, just a cost of doing business. So the owner is getting rent every month. The trustee for the two women in San Francisco are getting the rental checks, and they don't care. And the bank is just saying it's a, it's a cost of doing business. Now, if it turned out that in six or eight years or whatever the period is, um, if, if they can no longer use it as a bank, then all of a sudden people's attention, I mean, they're not getting any checks. So at that point, uh, I think they would be much more proactive. Right now, it's, it's, it's an irritant that they can't use that uh, driveway, but it, it, doesn't, it didn't stop the flow of rental checks. Okay. So I have no requests to speak. Is there any other uh, council discussion? A yeah, uh, uh, couple questions. So um, you're recommending a special project. Did you have a budget in mind? Uh, I, I am assuming we'll come back with that because I, I, I don't have a good enough sense yet. Okay, because I'm, I, I, yeah, I don't want to know how much money and where's the money coming from. <laughs> it's coming from whatever project you want. <laughs> I think Excellent. it should come from the I sewer. Have no projects. The, the I sewer guess the fund. Zero. <laughs> the sewer plant fund. No, uh, well, if, if you want a number, I'd say twenty thousand dollars to begin with. Okay. On the city attorney. So yeah, I, I, um, the other thing is timing. So as we just went through, you're on two other committees that have some uh, activity that is imminent. I, I anticipate this to be wrapped up. I, I have a pre we we have a presentation to make to the uh, the Chamber of Commerce board uh, this Thursday morning, and then the Lava board uh, I think Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning. Um, uh, if they can get to me, uh, it's not fair to ask them to select a representative because that assumes that they've come to a consensus. I don't think they're going to come to a consensus. We just want somebody that, that they have confidence in that can be a conduit of information. So if they can get to us uh, some names, uh, I anticipate this to be about a six-month process. It will be done by the time I'm off the council. I, it, this isn't going to lay around. Okay, and and the other two committee assignments will also be done. Well, th those are those are minor. The the, the, the dog committee 